So we have more teams getting hit with unfortunate injury after unfortunate injury, with one of those being the Philadelphia Eagles. The problem with Philly is they can't seem to keep their key pieces out there together at the same time. So we've got to talk about that. The Saints dealing with a ton of injuries themselves, Saquon Barkley returning home, and more right after. First up, before we get to some injury updates and news from around the league, the Saints and Broncos squared off on Thursday Night Football last night, and uh, if you didn't see it, don't even go back and watch the highlights. You missed nothing. I mean, it was Sean Payton's return to New Orleans, and Drew Brees was also there as he was being inducted into the Saints Hall of Fame. So there were some cool storylines, but the game was absolutely brutal to watch. I almost poured bleach into my eyes at halftime, but made it through and survived. It turns out Bo Nix still sucks. He was 16 of 26 for 164 yards and zero touchdowns, yet was carried to a 33 to 10 win thanks in a large part to his defense, which we'll get to in a second, but also a couple of Javante Williams touchdowns, four field goals, and a strip sack returned for a touchdown late in the fourth quarter. Spencer Rattler wasn't any better. He was 25 of 35 for 172 yards, but in fairness to him, he was throwing to the local high school team with both Chris Olave and Rashid Shahid not in there. And then on top of that, the O-line was very banged up. The interior is completely shredded at this point in time. And this man, Rattler, was sacked six times as he ran for his life on many of these downs. So yeah, not only did the Saints drop to two and five after winning their first two games of the season, but they lost yet another key player to injury in last night's game. Cornerback Paulson Adebo went down after making what looked like a semi-routine tackle on Javante Williams in the second quarter. As soon as he landed, though, he immediately flagged down the medical staff knowing something happened. His leg was put into an air cast, and he was carted off. Well, head coach Dennis Allen confirmed after the game that he broke his femur. What's crazy about that is the femur is the longest, heaviest, and strongest bone in your body, one that is extremely difficult to break. Adam Schefter reported today that Adebo ended up undergoing surgery, and he's looking at a recovery time of about four to five months, which means... His season is over, so I'm definitely wishing him a successful recovery, and there's never a convenient time to break your femur, but it's unfortunate considering he's set to become an unrestricted free agent this offseason. It's yet another devastating blow to the Saints team that's been ravaged by injuries. Derek Carr, Chris Olave, Taysom Hill, all battling through injury right now. Then yesterday it was announced that Rashid Shahid will miss the rest of the season with a torn meniscus. I don't know what the hell is going on down there in New Orleans, but stay strong, Saints fans, if that's even possible. And while we're on the subject of injuries, Drake May spoke with the media this morning and said that his knee is feeling good and he's ready to go for Sunday. Well, I talked about this in Wednesday's video, but he surprisingly popped up on the injury report this week with a knee injury, was a full participant at practice, but then it was discovered he underwent an MRI after that practice, and he said he was dealing with some soreness, but of course, everyone started to panic because this whole situation was eerily similar to how J.J. McCarthy's injury played out. He said he was dealing with routine soreness after a preseason game, underwent a precautionary MRI, then it was revealed that he tore his meniscus and would have to undergo season-ending surgery. Thankfully for May, that doesn't appear to be the case, though he didn't really delve into much detail, saying, quote, injuries are something that you don't really try to share with the media, Looking forward to Sunday. Well, okay then. I, for one, cannot wait to watch the 1-5 in five Jags go up against the 1-5 in five Patriots first thing Sunday morning. Speaking of that piss-poor poverty team matchup, both teams starting running backs are going to be a game-time decision. Ramondre Stevenson is dealing with a foot injury that he sustained in Week 5, and Travis Etienne injured his hamstring last week in the first half against the Bears, a game that was also played in London. I mean, seriously, why are we subjecting the good people of London to watching the Jags not once, but two weeks in a row? I mean, I understand they contractually have to do that. They did this last year, but are we punishing these guys over the tea tax? America already won the war, but this sure does feel like we are rubbing salt in the wound. Anyways, moving on to another running back, Aaron Jones, who has been dealing with a hip slash hamstring injury since week five is, quote, on track to play versus the Lions this Sunday, according to Ian Rappaport. That's great news for the Vikings, who are taking on the Lions this week and need all the help they can get. 
And while they likely won't have tight end TJ Hawkinson for that game, he could be playing next week when the Vikes take on the Rams in LA. He's been recovering from a torn ACL that he suffered late last season. And when asked about his rehab process, he said he's passed every test by miles and that he's stronger and faster than he's ever been. And if that's true, that's not only great news for Vikings fans, but that's just great news for the Vikings offense in general. They were the fifth highest scoring offense in the league without him. So once he comes back, that's going to be an even scarier thing for them. Sadly, he can't return before this game against uh, the Lions. It's a very key game for them, but they should have him back very soon. Now, someone who will be facing off against their former team this week is Saquon Barkley. The Eagles are traveling to New York to take on the Giants, so that means we get to see Saquon return to his old stomping grounds. I'm sure he's possibly going to get booed like crazy for choosing to sign with a rival team, but Saquon grew up in Pennsylvania. He went to Penn State. And the Giants reportedly refused to match his three-year, $37.75 million contract that the Eagles gave him. So as much as I can't stand Prick Sirianni and the Eagles, I kind of hope Saquon runs all over the G-men in front of their own fans. Now, someone who will not be playing in that game, and at least the next four games, is Eagles left tackle Jordan Maylotta after he was placed on IR today. It's not an extremely surprising thing that happened considering he looked pretty bad. He had a hamstring injury that was sustained in the win over the Browns last week. Uh, he had to be carted off, and this is not a huge surprise here, but the team did make the move to put him on IR today, making him unavailable uh, for at least the next four games, and hopefully he's able to recover within that window and make a somewhat swift return as hamstring injuries are known to linger uh, for quite a while. He's one of the best left tackles in the league with him and Lane Johnson forming what is probably the best tackle duo in all of football. So even if he's out for four games, it's a big loss for the Eagles offense who have been struggling to keep their key offensive pieces all out there and healthy on the field together. A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith missed quite a bit of time due to various injuries in recent weeks, and they did return last week, had a monster game from A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith both so that's good news, right? They're all out there. But then they lose their star left tackle and most productive tight end in Dallas Goddard as he is ruled out for this game as well with the hamstring injury. He's not being placed on IR, but he is ruled out. So the tough luck just keeps going for the Eagles, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Then for the Indianapolis Colts, quarterback Anthony Richardson is set to make his return after missing the last two games with an oblique injury. It's probably bittersweet for Colts fans. Uh, the offense has honestly looked a bit better with Joe Flacco under center, but the team spent the fourth overall pick in last year's draft on Richardson, and his development is honestly just as, if not more important than them winning games this season. Let's be honest, even if they were to make the playoffs, this team doesn't have a real shot at making a deep run, at least not in my opinion, so why not give your young franchise quarterback more reps and experience? He'll be without Jonathan Taylor in the backfield, though, as he's going to miss his third straight game after suffering a high ankle sprain in Week 4. Next up, 49ers rookie receiver Ricky Pearsall could be making his NFL debut this Sunday against the Kansas City Chiefs. Pearsall was shot just eight weeks ago before the start of the season in an attempted armed robbery in San Francisco. During a wrestle for the gun, he was shot in the right side of his chest and somehow the bullet traveled out through his back without hitting any bones or vital organs. The 49ers did end up placing him on the non-football injury list to start the season and his recovery has been going extremely well with him officially returning to practice this past Monday and the fact that he's even practicing this soon is pretty remarkable and GM John Lynch said that quote absolutely there's a chance that Pearsall plays Sunday. I think it's trending in a good direction and if Ricky Pearsall does return that's pretty good news for the 49ers as both Jawan Jennings and Debo Samuel are battling through injuries at the moment. And now let's go from that heartwarming story to talk about a blood boiling one. After the Ravens and Commanders played last Sunday, a douchebag Ravens fan named John Callis, I don't know how to say his last name properly and do not care, but he ended up approaching two guys wearing Commanders jerseys and started throwing punches and attacking them, seemingly unprovoked, I'm sure there's always more to the story, but either way, it's never okay to attack somebody like this. It's absolutely insane. So after this tiny peckered piece of trash assaulted these guys on camera, he actually celebrated this. I don't lose. Yeah! Let 
Well, it turns out he does lose because not only did the insurance company he worked for fire him after the video surfaced online, but the Baltimore police issued a warrant for his arrest. The 24-year-old idiot is wanted for first-degree aggravated assault and second-degree assault, with the first-degree aggravated assault being a felony in the state of Maryland. I really hope they throw the book at this clown. I mean, not only did he assault two strangers who were minding their own business, seemingly minding their own business, but he had people record it and then gloated about it. So yeah, that's definitely a much deserved L from that loser. All right, well, it felt weird to end this after such a serious segment, but let me know your thoughts on what should happen with this clown in the comments down below. And with that, I'll see y'all next time. Don't break, start, don't break.